Hey what's up guys this is 3D Bonfire back with another amazing tutorial and this time I just wanted to give you one of my smaller lessons from a Patreon 3D Bonfire for free because I think this is just valuable for almost every Cinema 4D or 3D artist and I don't want to keep it as a secret. Some of you already know that stuff of course but honestly before 2023 I never used these basic habits to be more efficient and more productive all right. So let me just share this simple knowledge with you here on YouTube also but of course if you want to have more of the good stuff on my Patreon there is a lot of good stuff all right. So if you want to subscribe to my Patreon that would be just amazing. I have already over 300 patrons who hopefully think that this is cool stuff all right. So if you want to support me that would be just amazing. But of course it would be also pretty cool when you subscribe to my YouTube channel, ring the bell, write a comment, do the good stuff, the usual YouTube stuff and I especially like your comments all right. <laughs> so just if you feel that this was helpful just say hey Marcus that was cool. Other than that you can find some free stuff on my Gumroad all right. So maybe you want to have some cool wallpapers for your huge 4k or ultra wide screens then just download these wallpapers. You can also follow me on Instagram it's Marcus Gonza 3D to see my latest artworks and other than that let's just start with this Patreon exclusive class now on YouTube because I think this knowledge should be shared with everyone. All right so let's just start with the lesson. Hey what's up guys this is 3D Bonfire back with another amazing tutorial and this time it's kind of a dry topic but I think it would be really beneficial to set up a default scene so you don't always start with this blank scene and you don't have anything in your scene. So for example it could be helpful to already have a little hierarchy here and in addition have some layers where you can put your objects onto it to just have a more structured approach to your Cinema 4D scenes and maybe set up at least two really important buttons all right. So over the years I honestly never used the default scene and I'm pretty sure that I lost some valuable time by always setting something new something like scene all right I already spelled it wrong. Often I just use nulls and do something like this one to separate my objects but I think it would be really helpful to have something like um, geometry light camera and just have a minimal approach here. So don't make it too complex because then you just start a new scene and you don't need all of this one. So I like to keep it simple but try to be more effective in this new year 2023 because as I said I think sometimes I rebuild hierarchies that could be already there. All right so let's be clever. So my wish for you is that you don't waste as much time as I did over the years and just be a bit more clever here. So I think the first thing that I would love to have in my scene. So for example you have your objects here and of course everybody of you knows about the reset PSR button. All right nowadays it's called reset transform but honestly I almost never used it because I mean this is always also an approach to just right click on all of these parameters. All right so wherever your object is I always did it like this. I just went through it and I mean this is like half a second but maybe you could be just a bit faster when you put the reset transform button for example here or over there. So of course you can click on your object and go down to this one. It's already on alt zero but I think I'm just not a big fan of pressing two buttons. <laughs> All right so you could of course press alt zero and it's not that complicated but I would love to have a button here in my layout. I just go to window customization commands and I just search for reset transform and then you could put it in the scene maybe here. That would be a good fit. So I think I want to have something like a group separator. I think this is and then I just put the reset transform here. All right so now when I have my cube and I'm pretty sure most of you already do it like this but then you could just always just click on this button nice and snappy and it's just a little bit faster than doing it like this. All right so we have this button here and something that you will use pretty often I hope so at least is the commander and when you think when you press shift C and then you can open it but for me maybe this is because um, is it the right word so I have so my strong hand is the left hand and the right hand I have on my keyboard pretty much to the right and there is a little button like the minus button which is the top button on my keyboard where just my my finger is always almost laying over there. So this is where I have my commander and in your case it will be on command C but 
it's sometimes for me it's it's just slower when I have to press two buttons and I just have it over here where my hand is already laying naturally on my keyboard. So you could also put your commander when you search for it, commander, then you can see I put it on the minus on my number pad on my keyboard. And this is just um, like only a couple of centimeters for me to move the finger there. So this just feels natural and you could change your commander also to something that you prefer to just be a little bit faster because I have to look on my keyboard and oh shift C and do it. Maybe you are faster with it, but I just like to put this one on a custom button. All right. And there is not so much more that I like to do in this scene with the buttons, but maybe we can create some default null elements. So let's just do this one together. So for now, I want to keep the cube and I want to create a null, which we can name it geo. And I will create another one, which is called light and maybe one more, which is called cams. And then I put one more, which is called MoGraph and simulation. So of course you can choose another system for your scene. You could already put the cube into the geo and maybe it would be a good idea to just write these ones in big letters. So I would just do this one. All right. I think this will just feel a little bit more, a bit more important. Okay. So let's also put the system into the layers and you can see I already did this one. So I have a layer for the geo for the cam. Let's put the cam up here, maybe lights and MoGraph. So you can have it like this and yeah, just put the geo on the geo, cam on cam, lights, and this one onto the MoGraph, and this one onto this one. All right. I think you can also change the colors here. You so just search for something that you like and what makes sense for you. I just went with these colors here. And I think you can also give this one the color to the same color to make it even more stand out. All right. So, so when you select all of them, then you just have to make this one visible. So you go to the icon and then you can set this one to the display color. All right. It somehow just worked for the first one. So let's just go through them. Oh, okay. Something is wrong here. Ah, okay. I think I have to set all of these ones to the layer. All right. So now it is working. You can see that when we set this one to the display color, then all of them will also get this color here. With none, it will be white. But now this looks, looks um, really colorful here. Okay. You can make it even more interesting by clicking on the icon. So let's just load another preset here. So for example, this little goat. All right. doesn't make any sense. So let's just search for something else. And of course, something like the folder, of course, would be perfectly fitting for this one. So I like to do it like this one. Let's see. Can we do it for all of them at the same time? Load a preset and click on this one. All right. But now we lost the color somehow. So let's just see. Let's put this one back to display color. And now finally we got all of these colorful folders here. All right. Hmm. Not sure if I like it. It's a bit too colorful for me, but yeah, it's, it's okay. So let me just think about these ugly colors. So I think I want to have the cameras, hmm. maybe something more grayish light is perfect for this one. The, the cameras is for me more like a gray tone and the geo. I'm not sure if I always want to see this color here. So I want to make the geo blue. This is cool for me. And camera, I just make it more like a white tone. This is good for me. The light, I want to give it something warm, something like this. That makes sense. And MoGraph feels for me like a green tone. Yeah, that's cool. Let's just see. Maybe I want to have MoGraph on something like this. All right. I just like these colors more. Now you can't see the folder icon so good. So I just switch this one to, hmm. I know I make this too complicated here, <laughs> but let's just have some fun here. All right. And I think the folder icon could also be a little bit more beautiful. So I just go to the presets here and let's try this one. All right. Let's just put it back to display color. Okay. So this is working for me a lot of colors. So this is looking beautiful. And now we can make our scene even better when we just put maybe a little studio into our scene. So let's just do this. So I would just create a plane 
NB to go to the lines. All right, let's just put this one to one by one. And I think this could be something like eight meters maybe. Or you know what, let's make it bigger. Let's put it to 15 meters and 15 meters. So we have a big studio here. Let's press C. And, and let's not make this one too long, but I will just drag this one up maybe to, let's see, nine meters. This is good for me. All right, now I click on the edge here and I will go to select and store the selection. Now let's create a bevel deformer, put it into the plane and let's put the selection into the selection here. And now you can see something happened here. So this will be beveled. So let's just make this one bigger to maybe two meters. All right. And let's just give it a lot of subdivisions. I want to have this one really smooth. NA to see it. All right, this is working for me. I just want to move the whole scene just a bit more to the front, something like this. All right. And I don't want to start with a cube here. I always want to start with a sphere maybe. All right. So you always can have the sphere in the scene, put this one to 100. So now this is perfectly sitting on the floor. All right. So we have something like a little studio here. Press shift V to see the save frames. So you can see these are the save frames. Let's just put this one to 100. And maybe we always want to start with a ratio like this one. That could be a good idea. And now how about the Redshift camera? I just make sure that my render settings are also set to Redshift. Now I will go to my camera, reset it to zero. All right, I will just move it over there, rotate it 180, move it up, something like this. All right, maybe, yeah, this is fine. Let's just have this one at 180, like a human figure is standing here. Let's put it to zero. Let's put this one to eight meters. And now we would have a default scene like this one. Maybe we also always want to start with the redshift render view in our scene. All right, so I will just do it like this. And maybe we are sure that we always want to have some default lighting in the scene. So I will just go to the dome light, put the dome light into my scene and let's just choose a dome light here. All right, so I choose this one bathroom hard here, okay. So this is from the site from Maxime Ross and he has a couple of free HDRI. So this is perfect. I will just try to move this one maybe to a light setup like this one. So we have a strong light coming from here. This is our key light. We could also put a fill light and stuff into the scene, but I don't want to make this one too complicated. I just want to maybe intensify it a little bit, something like this one. All right, we could also put already a redshift standard material into the scene, put it onto our sphere. Of course, you could also use here another object, maybe a shader ball or something like this. So I just want to keep it really simple, have a material, a light dome and a camera. So now we can go to the layers, put the dome onto the lights, put the camera onto the camera, put the sphere on the geo and the plane. We could also put this one on the geometry. And now I want to just move these elements into the geo, the camera into the cam and the light into the light. And we could start with something like this. All right, so let's just save this one as a default scene. So I will just go over here to Windows, Customize, Customization and save this one as a default scene. So now we could close Cinema 4D and it will always start with the scene. Maybe just one small thing that I like to change because most of the time I will fire up the Redshift renderer later. So I will close this one for now and I will also press Shift C and get rid of the borders to keep this one really simple because most of the time I start with modeling and stuff. So I will just keep it like this one and I'm not even sure if I like the sphere in my scene. So you could also get rid of this one. but. Yeah, I will keep it like this one. So save as a default scene and now I will close it and fire it up again and let's see if it works. All right, and I just fired up Cinema 4D again and this is my default scene. So everything is working perfectly. So from now on, you can always start with a simple hierarchy and a simple scene like this one. Maybe in the future, I would get rid of the sphere and just keep it simple like this. And maybe one more thing, I would also go inside of this one, go to the dome light and I just don't want to see this always in the background. So I think I would start with something like this to not be in the camera 
actually to keep it like this one just to have a basic overview so i will save this one more time save as a default scene or you know what i will also make this one smaller now save it one last time and now from now on i will start the whole year 2023 with this simple layout all right thank you so much for your time i hope this was beneficial for you see you next time bye everyone